During the Cold War, the U.S. Navy launched the infamous Ivy Bells project to spy on the Soviets. The legendary USS Halibut submarine was chosen for this mission. Yet not everyone was on board with the idea. Admiral Hyman G. Rickover, excluded from the intelligence network of the Navy and the CIA, created a spy submarine, the NR-1. The NR-1, designed to perform deep sea tasks, had advanced computer and sonar systems and various tools for recovery operations, exploration, and research. Despite being marketed as a rescue submarine, she was primarily used for covert missions. Nevertheless, the submarine conducted various missions, including search operations, object recovery, and oceanographic research, and she did it all while holding the title of the smallest nuclear submarine in U.S. military history. I Spy In the midst of the Cold War, the U.S. Navy devised a clever plan to tap into the Soviet submarine communications cables, underwater telephone lines that connected Soviet naval bases to their headquarters. Under the impression that these cables were secure, as they were physical wires rather than radio transmissions, many of their communications were not encrypted, meaning the U.S. Navy could listen in on their conversations. The U.S. Navy's secret project, Ivy Bells, proved highly successful. The legendary USS Halibut was the first submarine chosen for this critical mission, providing valuable intelligence on Soviet submarine operations. Equipped with the necessary tools to tap into the underwater cables and provide valuable intelligence about Soviet submarine operations, plans, and procedures, she offered the U.S. naval intelligence a direct window into the enemy's activities. Not everyone supported the Ivy Bells project. Admiral Hyman G. Rickover, the influential figure in the nuclear reactors branch of the U.S. Navy, viewed the USS Halibut project with suspicion. Despite his accomplishments in overseeing the development of nuclear propulsion, he was excluded from naval intelligence and the CIA. Therefore, with the help of John P. Craven, the U.S. Navy scientist who worked on the modifications for USS Halibut, the Admiral worked on creating his own spy submarine. Rickover had big plans for his creation. He envisioned a fleet of mini-submarines that could perform search and rescue operations, recover valuable objects underwater, and conduct scientific research. However, he ensured these vessels were not officially classified as warships, so they could operate with less oversight from the various government bureaus. Out of this initiative, the NR-1 was born. True Colors The deep submergence vessel NR-1 was a special kind of submarine. Unlike other submarines, she didn't have formal commissioning and was known as NR-1, which stood for Navy Reactors, a unique name chosen to exempt her from a quota of nuclear submarines and emphasize her direct association with Rickover. NR-1 was designed to be different from other submarines, like Halibut. Instead of relying on divers for underwater tasks, NR-1 utilized hydraulic manipulator arms because the places NR-1 ventured were too deep for human divers, reaching depths up to 2,375 feet below the surface. Naval analyst H.I. Sutton detailed that the submarine's hull had to be constructed with extreme precision to withstand the immense water pressure. Even the slightest deviation from a perfectly circular cross-section could result in the hull being crushed. But due to her deep diving capabilities and the significant funds required for her development, NR-1 was often referred to as a rescue submarine, a convenient cover story. Indeed, deep sea rescue was a genuine concern, and the public accepted taxpayer money invested in technologies that could save lives in underwater emergencies. Admittedly, however, NR-1 was not suited for deep sea rescue. Nevertheless, she was painted in bright colors and cleverly marketed as a search and rescue vessel. The project ran concurrently with the Halibut submarine and competed for the same funding and talent pool. Nevertheless, Halibut operated under naval intelligence on the west coast and NR-1 under Rickover's direction on the east coast so their paths never crossed. Packing a Punch NR-1 was uniquely constructed by General Dynamics Electric Boat Division in Groton, Connecticut. A small vessel, she measured only 45 meters in length and weighed 400 long tons and required a single nuclear reactor and one turbine generator. NR-1 had two propellers and four ducted thrusters, allowing for a speed of up to 4.6 miles per hour. Although slow compared to other Navy submarines, NR-1 served her purpose effectively. Interestingly, the midget submarine had to be towed out to sea by a surface vessel because of her slow speed. Yet her size was not a sign of weakness. 
She was equipped with advanced computer and sonar systems, as well as various tools and features for her missions. These included a claw for recovery operations, three viewports, a basket for depositing items on the sea floor, bottoming wheels, exterior lighting, a television periscope, TV and still cameras, and a manipulator with cutting and gripping tools. The crucial advantage of nuclear power was that it didn't require air, allowing the submarine to remain submerged for as long as the crew could endure. In practice, that meant about a month, with the limiting factor being the capacity of the toilet. Due to her limited size, she could accommodate a crew of around 10 to 13 people. Many aspects of the submarine were far from glamorous. Basic amenities like the cooker were inadequate, and the crew's living space was minimal. The submariners had to rely on frozen meals and bathe once a week using a bucket. To ensure an adequate oxygen supply, they had to burn chlorate candles, a device that releases oxygen through a chemical reaction. The crew was carefully selected from the top graduates of the Navy's elite nuclear power school, where submarine officers and engineers received their training. Admiral Rickover insisted on this requirement to ensure the crew came from his own world. The Open Ocean NR-1 was a marvel of engineering, and her nuclear power plant a miracle of miniaturization and simplification. Unlike traditional nuclear reactors with massive power outputs, NR-1's reactor was tiny and comparable to a diesel engine. To save weight, the lead shielding typically surrounding a nuclear reactor was limited to the forward bulkhead, protecting the crew. Although the plan was to build several deep submergence vessels like NR-1, budget constraints prevented any additional ones from being constructed. Furthermore, NR-1 was never officially commissioned. Regardless, she would serve in the depths of the world's oceans. The submarine's missions encompassed a range of activities, such as search operations, object recovery, geological surveys, oceanographic research, and the installation and maintenance of underwater equipment. NR-1 had a remarkable capability to stay in one location and thoroughly map or search an area with great precision, which proved invaluable on several occasions. She could dive to incredible depths and maneuver along the ocean floor. Although her maximum depth was over three times greater than that of other fleet boats, it was still relatively shallow compared to the open ocean, which averages over 12,000 feet deep. The submarine had wheels, similar to Goodyear truck tires, mounted along the keel, enabling NR-1 to search the seafloor at close range and powerful floodlights to locate the remains of Soviet missiles. A crew member would lie on their belly at the bottom of the craft, peering out through small portholes to observe the sea floor. If they found something of interest, it could be retrieved using a hydraulic grabbing arm and placed in a retractable storage cage. On top of being Admiral Rickover's personal midget submarine, NR-1 had a strictly covert and clandestine purpose. Uncharted Territories The special mission ships of the U.S. Navy were involved in some remarkable intelligence operations, which were initially kept secret but have gained renewed attention. However, several missions carried out by the mysterious NR-1 remained shrouded in secrecy. During the 1970s and 1980s, NR-1 undertook numerous classified missions to retrieve objects from the deep sea floor. Still, one mission we do know about. In October 1976, NR-1 was deployed to locate and recover a U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcat fighter aircraft resting under 1,960 feet of water after falling off the deck of the USS John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier. A decade later, NR-1 was also involved in conducting surveys of the seabed to support the investigation into the Challenger space shuttle disaster. After the loss of the Challenger, NR-1 played a crucial role in searching for and retrieving vital parts of the space shuttle. In October 1994, NR-1 conducted a survey off the Florida Straits, about 65 kilometers southwest of Key West, where she unexpectedly encountered and explored an uncharted sinkhole. This sinkhole was later named NR-1 in December 1998 by an advisory committee. Additionally, in 1995, the renowned explorer Robert Ballard utilized NR-1 and her support ship MV Caroline Chouet to explore the wreck of HMHS Britannic, the sister ship of RMS Titanic, which had sunk off the coast of Greece while serving as a hospital ship during World War I. After a long and secretive career, NR-1 was retired in 2008. In 2013, parts of the submarine were displayed at the Submarine Force Library and Museum in Groton. Former crew members, unable to disclose specific details of their top-secret work, shared their experiences, emphasizing the unique and captivating nature of being part of the NR-1 crew. 
Thank you for tuning in to Dark Seas. If you enjoyed this video, please show your enthusiasm with a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to join our community. Also, don't miss out on the rest of our Dark Documentaries collection to learn more about recent military stories and technology. Stay tuned for more exciting adventures.